traveled to Africa a few years ago and I was inspired by what I saw. I was a little bit upset about the poverty and the lack of options. And I saw a great need there and it, it, the passion was ignited in me. And when I came back home, I started thinking of plans and trying to tell my friends, tell family about what's going on in Africa, how we can help, how there's a great need for it. So I began to organize and put together a group of team to come to Africa, to travel with me, so they can see, because I was doing some things on my own over there. I was donating money, I was doing the orphanages, we were feeding people, and I couldn't do enough by myself. I needed more people. So I organized a missions trip to bring several of my friends and family to visit and see what Africa was about. So guys, our departure is 615. And it's this way? So this is the way, gate E11. I'm Mike McDermott, and we're here with the Bellas Nova team. We're at the Atlanta International Airport, getting ready to hop on the airplane, fly to Johannesburg. We're excited about the day. We're excited about the long flight. But more importantly, man, we're excited about getting out on the ground out there, touching some people's lives, seeing people's lives change. Not only is it going to be transforming for the people on our team, but it's going to be able to, we're going to be able to touch people around the world. So we're looking forward just to very to a very powerful and impactful moment. Hey, I'm Sabrina, um, Sabrina Santos. I live in Houston and I work at Papa Seafood as a waitress. Actually, I met Jerry at Papa Seafood and um, after um, him coming back and whatnot, and then one day I went out with some friends at Papa Cito's and he told me, we're going to Africa, you wanna come? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> why not? And I've never been to Africa before. It feels like we have a really good group of people here and I just think he's going to lead us in the direct, right direction. Maybe it's ministry or whatever he calls us to be because it was not an accident for us to be here. We are here for a purpose. Hi, I'm Bree and I'm from Houston, Texas. We just ate um, a bunch of food and now we're going to sit for three hours and then get on a plane and then sleep for 12 hours. Leading up to the trip to Africa, we had several meetings. We want to make sure everybody was on the same page. Communication is a big key. Making sure everybody's got the proper documentations, that we've all you know, gotten a chance to know each other, because you're going to have a mixture of personalities when you're out there. You're not just going on a trip. It's not a vacation. You know, It's a work initiative. So we had pre-meetings where we went through just all of the requirements and the things that we'd be doing out there. You know, It was going to be fun. It was going to be great. But at the same time, it was going to be, there's going to be a grind. It's going to be uh, life-changing and transforming. Then we hopped on the airplane, you know, when we flew across the ocean, and before you know it, we're landed in Johannesburg. And as soon as you step off, you're like, wow, I'm on the other side of the world. We're here in Johannesburg with a team of people from the United States. And for a lot of these people, they've never even traveled, you know, far within the United States, let alone for them to travel internationally. So you get off the plane and everybody's like, what do I do? Where do I go? And so, you know, we all just kind of huddle together as a pack and we're going through you know, the airport and, you know, Casio's there. He picks us up. You know, our contact over there was running an amazing operation. We're in Johannesburg, South Africa. We're getting ready to hop on our charter bus and head to the Healing Wings Farm. We're excited and pumped. It's going to be an amazing trip. We're on a bus. Have you just left the um, Johannesburg Airport? And um, I'm here because uh, I work with Jerry. and uh, do real estate property management with him. He told us about this. Uh, this journey, so uh, very excited to experience it and be a part of it, and uh, along with my daughter, Trisha. We are running on no sleep, 17 hours on the plane, swollen feet, and we are so excited. It's the coolest thing ever, because we're in South Africa, it's beautiful, it's nice and cool, we're so excited for what's about to happen. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. So I think we're, we're really excited to have you guys. It feels like it's weird that it's arrived. Yes. <laughs> so, so we're really excited to have you guys here. Um, Theo's got the plan for the accommodation. We arrived a bit late for the reception. Yeah. So it's not okay, 24 hours in <laughs> Four different accommodation places. I've got a room with four single beds. Then there is a room with house with three by two single beds uh, with six beds and then there's another room with two single beds and another uh, house with two single beds so i think if you can just divide up 
let's figure out where we're going. Oh, oh so you've got the keys I'll here. I've got the keys, yeah. Okay, so... breakfast here and uh, getting ready to head on over to the Healing Links facility. Uh, we're going to tour their facility, find out a little bit more about their program, the rehabilitation program, and just learn more about the vision. So it's beautiful. We're out here in the Pumalanga Mountains. It's awesome. Can't beat this. like 15 minutes on this getting to Healing Wings Sudwalla on this road that in America wouldn't be considered a road but there it's a road obviously and it's completely amazing and beautiful um, the mountains around the tree farms everywhere and you show up and you don't feel like you're you know at a rehab it's like you're at a resort and you know they cook outside, they have a special room for you. Everything was so beautiful. And just to think that these people are here because they have to be and they're getting over their problems. And we show up and we're like, can we stay and hang out? Because it's so, so beautiful. We're at the Healing Wings Youth Center where, where the young boys live, well, the young men, soon to be strapping young men. Um, and that's what they do here. They come and do their schooling, um, do life skills programs, do therapeutic programs so they can leave here and go and change the world basically is, is the general idea um, and a lot more detail happens here. So we're having a look at their, their rooms all along here and we'll move along just now to where they actually are doing some creative work at the moment. Now this is the patients when they come, like the cleaning of the lands. Um, you can make like the analogy of they taking like the weeds of their lives and like the rocks of their lives, and uh, we can like the whole process of uh, of looking after a seed and the seed growing and then bearing fruit is uh, you can compare it to the process of taking like the bad things from your life, planting new things and uh, and uh, and then you have to water it and, and care about uh, uh, whatever you you put yourself to do, and at the end result after you have applied yourself, will multiply and will we'll bear fruit. And it's the same with our life. Hi, my name is George. I'm the uh, executive chef at Healing Wings in South Africa. Tonight, for the guests, we've done a very traditional South African dish called a boboti. Um, it's it comes from the like for, from back in the day. It was a, quite a while back when the Cape Malay slaves. This was one of their. Well, this is one of those revered dishes that came over into the culture, and it's a very culturally South African dish. It's mince baked, and it comes with it's served with a, a turmeric raisin rice and a uh, broccoli salad. Here we are. We're just chilling here at Healing Wings. Had some awesome dinner. It's like gourmet chef. It's uh, fine dining all the way to the max. And right now, we're going to get ready to head out around the campfire have some prayer time, a little bit of acoustic guitar, just get into people's lives and just see what's going on. And so right now is the time where people will take a, a reflection and look on the inside and, uh, yeah, and get transformed. Yeah, we're, we're excited we're about what's about to happen tonight. One experience that I that I'll probably will never forget as long as I live was, uh, not, I think it was the first night we were there, there was a prayer service that they had for the men around the campfire. If I had to take a guess, I think it'd say about 30 guys, and then, you know, of course, the guys from the trip that were there uh, gathered around too. Me up, God. Me up, God. I'm in a youth group, and, and we have a certain style of worship, and it's the music has to be a certain way, the lights have to be a certain way, the drums have to sound a certain way, but to get to a place where you're literally stripped from your comfort zone, stripped from everything you're comfortable, everything you know, and to get to a place where it's literally just you, your voice, and God, and you have to give it all you got. Uh, that night, I just discovered the true definition of what real worship was. I found my, you know, I, I had this standard of worship, but that night, I learned a new level of worship. Um, just to see, um, you know, the people tonight, it was kind of, it wasn't your typical prayer or worship service, 
but they didn't care like they were passionate the lights went out and you know they kept singing or they were just so thankful for what was happening in their lives in the transitions so i think it was just i mean just we're like in my mind i thought we were you know we we're going to come here and be able to help with different things and we haven't done a single thing but be an observer and just been so moved by that just watching you know yeah. you know we were in the car and Chesley had said how cool it would be to have an observatory out here in South Africa but in all reality we are in an observatory that's all we've been doing all yeah. day is we have been observant just you know just God's amazing creation of people's lives being changed just ours being touched so you can't observe those types of things and not move you in some way Today we attended the Celebrate Recovery meeting where the theme was breaking addictive thinking. I feel like everyone is being so open and honest about everything and it's just really beautiful and touching to hear everyone just not filter anything. And like Sabrina was just so honest and confident in what she was saying and it was very moving. And I was so proud. I felt like a proud mother. Older sister, I'm not that old. A proud older sister. So we're about to go horseback riding, if you want to call it that. Some of us have been on horses before, some of us have not. We're going to go in groups of four, so there's some sort of control over all this mayhem that's about to take place. Those of us who haven't ridden are going to be in uh, like a pen, a round pen up here somewhere and then down further the ones who have ridden are going to get to ride down to the other pen or arena as they call it and get to ride around there so this will be fun they have a whole equine program here so you know one of the things that i was honored to be a part of over at healing wings was the, the some of the the smaller sessions they would have times where they'd break the men up and the women up so they could have personal time and talk with them and we're outsiders from the united states and we get to be in a circle of people that we're strangers but they're opening up about their life and they're putting it out there they don't care they're telling the truth about their life and the things that they've gone through and just the fact that people would trust us enough to embrace us and bring us into the world was a great honor Okay hey guys, we're heading to the Sabala Caves this morning for breakfast. We're going to do the cave tours. Then after that, we're going to depart for what they call the Elephant Whispers. So I'm thinking it's, a, uh, it's a, an elephant uh, reserve. So that's going to be a cool thing to see. And then we're going to have coffee there and have some interactions with the elephants. You know, roll around on the ground with them, play with them, you know, things like that. But <laughs> no, we'll get to connect with them. So then we'll have lunch there. And then uh, we're going to head on over to uh, Cater Bridge or the Chimpanzee's Den. That's if we have time, depending upon what time we wrap up lunch. Then we'll go to Healing Wings for dinner. And we'll have coffee, kind of chill there. And then we'll head on back to the lodge tonight. So all your meals are included today. So you don't have to worry about needing money for any meals or anything like that. All right? Cool. them oranges and hang out with them and you can see them down there and I'm super pumped to be amazing. Hi folks, uh, welcome to the group from the Bellis Novas team. You're at Elephant Whispers here in Hazy View in Mapumalanga, South Africa. On my right is uh, a gentleman who's been working with elephants for a long, long time. His name is Brighton Machapiece. And he comes from Zimbabwe, where elephants are uh, in strife like they are here. Here at uh, Elephant Whispers, our whole task is to bring people and educate them about the intricacies of uh, Loxodonta Africana, which is the African savanna elephant.
we are at the Elephant Whispers. It was awesome. We got to pet elephants. We got to feed them oranges. We got to touch the bottoms of their feet. It was awesome. It was a, it was a cool experience. We got to have pictures with us right up underneath them. For some of our people, they said this that experience right there was worth their whole entire uh, effort of coming on this trip. Good morning. Hello. My name is Trisha. I'm from Texas. And this place is amazing. You guys are so awesome. I'm so inspired. Everybody's so open and honest, and it's just awesome. It's so great to see. The feeling here is just like so positive and inspiring. So thank you for having us. Everyone has just been beyond welcoming. This is amazing. So thank you so much. Hello, I'm Cindy Peak. I too am from Houston. And Chesley just stole my Frank story. <laughs> uh, when we started working uh, at a particular apartment complex, the first person I met was Frank, and he won my heart that day. I knew that, first of all, I didn't know he had an addiction. I was very uh, ignorant to that world and, um, and innocent to it. And I couldn't figure out why he hurt me because I loved him so much. Um, I've learned so much now. I, I get it and I understand it. So even as Frank is getting well, which makes me so happy, I've learned so much from him. Um, he's taught me a lot. I want to quit talking now because I'll get emotional. But thank you for welcoming us here. And uh, it's changed my life and I know it's going to change yours too. Thank you. How are y'all doing? I'm Sabrina. Some of y'all already know me because I got to, for the first time, I got to stand up before a group of people and give my testimony. And that is part of, I feel like, why I'm here. Um, I didn't know why God was going to send me here, but um, just being around all of you, just getting to know, I didn't know anybody here, to be honest, nobody here from the mission team. So I got to meet new people and I love meeting new people every day. And I'm just so blessed and thankful that y'all have the hospitality y'all have given us, the, you know, y'all basically open y'all's arms wide, just, and we got to come into y'all's arms. and. We're here for y'all, and we're here to support y'all, and I just, God bless y'all. Just God bless y'all. Um, my name is Marissa. I'm a teacher in uh, Texas. Um, I came here to be a blessing. Thank you guys for blessing me. beautiful faces and watching you help each other and support each other has been amazing to see. And I want to encourage you. Um, I was married to an addict for 15 years and it was very, very hard to watch what he went through and it nearly broke me. Um, but God is good because every day I get up and I make it and I know that you can too, and I just encourage you and bless you, and thank you so much for letting us come into your lives at this moment in your life, and sharing with us, and being open with us, and just welcoming, welcoming us, so thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Bree. I'm also from Houston, and I had no idea what to expect coming here, because I've never had like a drug addiction so I was kind of worried and scared and I didn't really know what to expect but it's been it's a beautiful place and it's been amazing and everyone is so <laughs> nice and honest and we were in celebrate recovery and it was like the most open everyone's so I'm not even that open with myself sometimes and everyone here you just open all these things all your feelings and it really like encourages me to be a better person be more open which i was not expecting to be touched like in this way so it's been an amazing experience and i want to stay longer and hang out longer but we have to go to mozambique and that's going to be great and fun but um it's been wonderful and i encourage everyone i know it's tough i can tell it's tough and i've heard 
but just encourage each other because when you have this many people together, it's easier. When everyone's working through struggles together, it makes it easier. And thank you guys for being so wonderful. You can tell we're from Texas when you hear y'all. <laughs> um, my name is Robert. I'm from Houston, Texas as well. And uh, I'll tell you what, um, I was able to participate in in the, uh, the prayer meeting that you guys have here. And uh, it was one of the most powerful and one of the most life-touching uh, prayer meetings I've ever experienced. And, uh, and I just want to, to encourage you guys to keep pressing on. Um, and I know that you guys have great leaders here, a great team. Um, we don't even get this kind of love in Houston. <laughs> I'm just playing. But uh, seriously, you guys have shown a level of, of devotion and love um, like no other. Uh, you guys have truly touched me. I know that you've touched our team. Um, you know, they, we express it every night when we we're on the drive back of how great the people here are and how great you guys are. And every single one of you guys have a purpose. You have a destiny. You have something to live for. So I just want to encourage you guys to live for it. Fight the good fight. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Natalie. I am Michael's wife. <laughs> Not in church, all right? <laughs> um, anyway, thank you for having us. We're super excited to be here. Um, just a little bit about myself so I can relate to what I'm trying to say is, um, in my in my life um, as a teenager, I had a, experienced a teenage pregnancy, and I had as a teenager that was a big deal for me. My parents didn't even know that I was that I had any kind of relationship, and that was a big turning point for me. And I thought, God, how can anybody ever love me from the past and the things that I've done? And who, how can anybody ever want me with a, a history, you know? And I remember praying, God, if you just if you would take this and, and use this and make something positive out of this. And let me tell you, um, within a few years of my experience, um, I was able to be in an organization that went into every high school in my city and taught classes on, um, on uh, sexual abstinence and, and, and making good choices and relationships and spoke to you know, t thousands of teenagers, and God used that in a huge way. And let me tell you, every failure that you have, the failures that have gotten you here, I know this for sure, that failure is the key to success. Without failure, you will not have a success. If we didn't have someone fail over and over again, we wouldn't have the light bulb or the technology that we have. But failure, it could be a good thing, but it's a matter of how, how you respond to it. And so I just encourage you guys, respond to the failures in your life and ask God to use it. Ephesians 3.20, it's been our life um, scripture. It says, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. God has big things in store for you. He can do great things and use your life in a huge way. And, you know, for my life... Today I have an awesome husband who loves God, he loves people, and I know that he loves me. And I, I mean, that right there is just a, a huge thing, because sometimes you can be in a place in your life and think, how can anything good happen to me? I want to pray for Michael, he's going to say a little word, and he needs all the prayer he can get. <laughs> I just woke up and we are now on some kind of ferry with a bunch of people speaking in some language, like yelling at each other. Oh, it's Spanish? Is it Spanish? No, no, some, of them, some of them speak Portuguese and some of them speak uh, Shangong. And some other languages as well, I think there's Zulu and some other languages. Also. Very cool. Yeah. So we're going, I don't, is this a river or what? This is the sea. 
see where they were at the, where the one thought. side of the harbor. This is the ocean. That's what I thought. We're going oh. over to the other side. Of so the we're crossing. Yeah. I will tell so him. Hard. Tell him where we're going. Yeah, I know him. All you have to say when you get to, when you get there tomorrow morning, you see the Mozambican people. Just say, Kanimambo. What? Kanimambo. What is that? Like mean? like mambo, like you would do the mambo. Yeah. Kanimambo. What does that mean? It means. Um, Hello, good day, good morning, thank you very much. Yes, there you go. Cool. It's like a, you know, it's like a combination of a couple of things, but I think Kani Mambo is, uh, I think it means thank you in Shanghai. Okay. Time comes for us to go to Mozambique, and so we travel and we've got to cross the border, you know, Mozambique borders South Africa. So we go through the borders, you know, get the whole border process with our passports and our visas. And we go through that and we're on the bus and then boom, then we go through Map uh, Maputo, which is the largest city there in Mozambique. And uh, we get to see the city a little bit, get on a ferry. And then the moment that you cross this ferry, it's you're in, you're in, in, uh, in a land and a territory that is undeveloped. And I don't even know if you could call it a road, but it was a dirt path full with potholes and just you name it. The fact that we made it, you know, I think it took us like six hours just to get to the farm in Mozambique. The fact that we made it out there with, uh, without our, our bus breaking down, you know, it was awesome. So we got there, it was late at night. But the cool thing about getting there at nighttime is when you wake up in the morning and you haven't been there before, you get to experience it when the sun comes up and you're like, wow, this is a beautiful place. Just gonna stay here, and if y'all wanna just sit and run down, so uh, so I'm just gonna stay. Are you questioning what you signed up for? Not at all. What the heck did I sign up no, for? No, I'm just hey, gonna stay hello, here. Hello. Yeah, I think about doing this yeah. every week. Yeah. Yeah. Driving up and down every week. Yeah. Yeah. No you go hit me, go ahead. Hello. 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 Hey guys, we're in Mozambique. This is day action number six for us. Um, getting packed up to get ready to go out and meet them at the camp. Um, looking forward to today. Super excited for what's gonna take place. Uh, it's a little bit different environment, but we're making it work. You're the god of the We're doing a penne pasta in a in a sauce with steak mushrooms. It's a steak mushroom napolitana, so it's kind of a, a creamy steak type sauce, if I could say. <laughs> right now we're gonna wash the dishes for George. We're gonna hurry up because if George is in there, we're probably gonna get in trouble because he wants to do it, not us. So we're just gonna help him out because he's done so much for us. We appreciate all the picking, all the you know hospitality he gives us and stuff. So and the coffee. So when I saw the orphanage, my heart was so sad and I saw the need there. I was figuring out what can I do to help? So I started financially committing money every month to help the orphanage because they didn't have enough resources there locally to support it. And we started to expand the orphanages to add more rooms to it, more food. But I saw it was not going to be sustainable. I could not do this for years on out. So I had to think of a way to combine ministry with business. And so I started a commercial tilapia farm to be sustainable and it could, it could not only be profitable, we could feed the orphanages, we can provide salaries, we could do a lot more things than just burn through money. We we're creating a business model to serve the people. The tilapia are put into the breeding tanks. The female tilapia, they get pregnant, the eggs are in the mouth. And so after uh, the eggs are ready, the tilapia are then snatched up and the eggs are pulled out of the tilapia's mouth and then they're brought in here uh, to the hatchery in the nursery and they grow into what is called fingerlings. The reason why they call them fingerlings is because they're about the size of a finger. So they start off as an egg inside of the, in the mother's mouth, are brought in here to this building. They actually go through a sex reversal 
um, so that way males and females are not put together so we convert all of their sex so they're not mating and fighting with each other just to make things nice and calm <laughs> and so we bring them in here and we do all of that so you guys can want if you want to walk around and take a look Children's Village was amazing. Um, the the kids were beyond excited to see us and to interact with us, and um, just being there and feeling the love that they had for us, and being able to give them something that they don't have on a regular basis. I don't think was awesome. I think my favorite part of um the Healing Wings Mozambique was getting to uh, walk into the orphanage and immediately being surrounded by children. The first thing that was on my mind was I can't wait to get to the orphanage because we saw the kids um, driving um, the next morning and they were like all happy, they were waving at us and I'm like oh I can't wait to see the kids and the kids were just we were walking and we picked up three kids on the side of the road. You cannot say that in America. Like they just grab your hands. At first they were shy, but you just keep walking and they just grab your hands and you just take them to the orphanage. Of course they belong there obviously, but it was it was amazing and they just cling on to you automatically. <laughs> So it's the last day we're leaving, and the day that we leave, we throw a big party for the community, a Christmas party. All of the government officials from that region, the dignitaries, the businessmen, the ministers, the leaders, they all come for this big festival where there's uh, food, and there's dancing, and there's speeches given, and it was a real, real powerful, impacting time. And then there's giveaways. Everybody in the community, they got a gift bag that had you know, just some of the basic necessities of life, food and uh, you know, t uh, toiletries and toothbrushes and things of that nature. It was, a, it was a, just a, a huge way to be able to give back. But it was real impressive just to see the culture and the roots of the culture that are out there. I really enjoyed that a whole lot. So we're working that project and we're getting all of our stuff together because we've got to load back up and we've got to get back on the bus and drive hours to be able to get across the South African border to our lodge that we're going to stay in before we get on the airplane. <laughs>
one thing that stood out over there was they had some guys that did some of the drums and uh, dancing and the, kind of the whole activity there. That was very creative, very, I mean, it's, you see a lot of guys choreograph stuff like this and practice it out, but I mean, to be there and see these guys, it was, man, that was crazy, the, uh, the, the setup and to see the community there. I think it was amazing to have tents up and the kind of chairs for everyone and just and to see how like the community just came together and uh, you see the family members it just it really was a place that Christmas party was such a thing that really connected the community it wasn't just a hey come to our event but it was something like you came and you got connected and plugged in. Christmas party was cool we got to do some arts and crafts stuff um, at Alulamile. We got to do some work with um, Amana Modata and the jewelry shop, I guess you could call it. We got to do some beading and make some name tags and just being able to do things for the staff there that they would have had to do themselves was a good feeling because we took a little bit of the load off. We took a little bit off their plate. Still, they, they go above and beyond on a daily basis um, and especially to get an annual event like that all organized takes a lot of extra work that they don't, I mean, they still have their normal daily lives and daily routines and, and daily tasks that they're responsible for. And then preparing for this event just puts so much more on their shoulders and being able to take a little bit of that off was nice. So we're on our way out and we're in the van and things are going good for about the first hour. And before you know it, things start slowing down. And our bus driver was great. I mean, just the fact that he's driving around us, you know, 20 of us in this van is amazing for hours on end. But we're like, what's the deal? We couldn't figure out what was going on. And so it would slow down and then it'd start back up and then slow down and then it'd start back up. And the bus broke down. So now we're sitting here uh, enjoying each other's company and, you know, praying for the bus to start while Niels is up there and Michael are fidgeting with things under the hood. But... We'll get there. Well, we finally got to our ferry, you know, where we're going to cross this, uh, uh, cross the uh, the river to go to the city of Maputo. So we get on the ferry just before the bus gets on the ferry. It comes up over a little hump and then it dies. And we've got hundreds of Mozambicans standing around us, yelling at us, screaming at us, wanting to get our bus on this ferry. And the ferry can't take off because the bus is kind of halfway on it, and we can't figure out what's going on with it. Did you get to the battery? He has cables if you get to the battery. Yes. See if you can turn it. So we're trying to jump the car. We're trying to jump the bus. We're trying to uh, put a new battery in it. So we put a new battery in it. Somebody who had another vehicle on the ferry took their battery out, gave it to us. We put it back in and we were able to start it. And we put it back and got the bus on the ferry. But interesting enough, when we took that battery out and gave it back to the person who put the old battery back in, uh, it started back up. So it's obvious that there wasn't a battery issue. There was a motor issue. And so it took us a, another couple of hours before we uh, found out what was wrong. We literally stalled on the side of the road. And you know, a couple of us, they're not mechanics, but we were able to put our heads together, figure out what was wrong. And um, there's just a problem in the engine. We got it fixed. And before you know it, we were on the road again, and we were heading to the airport. So we get to Kruger Park and you know when you drive into the park, it's awesome. You're in a safari immediately. And you're looking out the window and there's zebras and there's elephants and, it, and you're not in a zoo. These are they are in the wild and Kruger Park is massive. It's a, I mean you could drive for hours upon hours upon hours and never reach the other side of it. Um, but it's just it's just gorgeous. It's peaceful. It's amazing to see, you know, the the these animals out there and I mean we saw uh, you know, rhinos and lions and I mean it was it, it was awesome it was beautiful it was it was gorgeous the lodge that we stayed in was was over the top and it, it, I would take anybody there at any time and it, their life would be changed six feet from us he he 
how we've seen the big five. Finished the safari, got to see the big five. Lions, elephants, leopards, rhino, and buffalo. Got to see them all today. Matter of fact, several people on our team had a safari to see those animals on their bucket list, so they can mark it off. Kruger Park was like the perfect ending to a somewhat hectic travel experience. I feel like it was, it's a very, obviously it's beautiful. But it was a great kind of unity, unity watching the sunset together and enjoying some quiet time. Not really on that much of a schedule anymore other than getting home. It was also kind of bittersweet because obviously the trip is over now and all that is left is the airport. But this is the perfect place for the last night, I think. It's beautiful here. Um. I feel like this experience was one of the best in my life, um, not only because of the people I got to meet, the people that touched me, um, but how God changed me from the moment I got here till now. I'm, I feel like I've grown, I'm stronger, I'm different, I'm excited, and I'm ready to go back home and start life over. This experience was amazing and I'm glad I got to experience it at a young age because now I've set myself a goal. I'm gonna to go to every single continent in the world except Antarctica, no, that's too cold. But that's my goal, like, because I never thought I'd be in Africa, I've now am able to set bigger goals and because of how vivid God has just made my picture for the rest of my life, so, I think this trip was amazing and just do it. Even if you think for once in a doubt, the enemy will tell you you cannot do it, just do it. The whole experience has been, it's been fun, it's been life changing. There's been some strange parts. Overall, it's been great. Um, I never thought six months ago I would be here, but it's been great. I, of course I would do it again. Next time they plan it, I will be here and I would encourage anyone to do it as well. This whole experience has been uh, inspiring and it's been kind of like a reality check almost. Like we have our ways back home. We go about our daily routines, we do what we do um, and probably give little thought to what goes on in other parts of the world or you know, even other parts of, of our own communities. Um, and it makes me want to, to do more. I've always been active in community service and I've always enjoyed giving back. Um, but I think this just takes me to that next level and makes me want to do even more. Um, would I do it again? Absolutely. I might not get on the plane tomorrow. Definitely do this again. The experience as a whole has been, uh, everyone keeps using the same word, but it's inspiring. I wanna go home and love more and be more appreciative and be more thankful and I wanna use less and buy less and save more and I just have all these goals now that I'm leaving with to be a better person. The whole experience has been life transforming. And not only that, I know that when I get back, um, I'll be able to be a better person, more effective person, better help in the youth ministry. Um, there's a lot of eye-opening things and, and my relationship with, with God has grew tremendously. I mean, it is, I've, got, I've truly had to become dependent on Him 100%. Very glad I did the trip. Um, I will do it again and I would encourage anyone to do this trip. It's life-changing.